Oh my god, I'm running 25 seconds. <laughs> Ow! Sorry. Alright, well, first of all, thank you for coming out on this beautiful morning. Luckily, we dodged the bullet because if you were following weather report earlier in the week, they were talking like 12 inches of snow. We didn't get that much snow, but I did get to spend some quality time this morning with my new shovel in my driveway. But it's all clear. We didn't have 12 inches of snow. Thank you. Get back. I was right before the test. I was starting chapter five. Let's go back and do a little review. When we're talking about a chemical equation or chemical reaction, when you mix two things together and you get something new, we call that a chemical. Reaction. And I showed it earlier when we talked about the lab that there are four things you should know when you have a, a chemical reaction. One is you see bubbles, that's indication. Another one, color change. Another one, temperature change. And a fourth one, that's an indication of chemical reaction, is a precipitate. Now, there are other things when you get to my level that are easier to look for, but those are key ones. When we show a chemical equation or a reaction by using a chemical equation, and here I have a very simple chemical equation that shows the chemical reaction. If I take A and B and react them together, the plus sign in a chemical equation is the word and. Think of it. <coughs> Excuse me. And what this means is A and B react. At the base of the arrow, we always have the reactants. I will call the starting materials. This is you worked in industry, which I have for many decades. Wow. Okay. Anyways, I have. We call those starting materials. At the head of the arrow, you see C, which is the product. And both academic and industrial companies call that the product. There's more than one. We call that the product. Now, I'll never ask you what are the conventions for a chemical reaction. Uh, the, but it's understood that if you have a real chemical reaction like this, the first thing is, the molecules you put down there should have the correct formula. And they do. And the same thing for the products. Remember, at the tail of the arrow are the reactants, starting material. And at the head of the arrow is the product or product. So I could say if you mix hydrogen gas with oxygen gas, the needle will spark the catalyzer. I haven't talked to you about what catalyst means yet. I will later on. You get water. Expensive way of making water, but you can. In fact, uh, the early space uh, station had a way of making water that way. And as I said, there are certain givens for a chemical reaction, and that means there should always be consistent with the experimental facts. If I mix two things together and I don't get water, then that's the wrong chemical equation. And I'll never ask you that on the test either. But when we look at a chemical equation, it has to be balanced. There's something called the law of conservation of matter. 
And in any chemical reaction, you never create or destroy elements. You never change what that atom is, but you change how it's connected together. And if we look here, on this side we have hydrogen oxygen. We still have hydrogen oxygen. You don't see all of a sudden carbon over here. No, because we're not reacting any carbon there or other elements. Now, an important thing with the conservation of matter is on each side of the arrow, you should have the same number and the same type of atom. And this is called a balanced chemical equation. And one of the skills you'll learn in my class, because it's an important skill in chemistry, is how to balance a chemical equation. And I haven't written it yet, but I, maybe you'll start this weekend. But historically, usually on test two, I'll have nine to 12 points dealing with, can you balance a chemical equation? And also on the final, I'll have somewhere around nine to 12 points, because it's something very important. So let's learn how to do that skill. I think I already did this one, but I'm doing it again. And if we look here, I have two hydrogens. You count the atoms. And I have two oxygens. On this side, in water, I have two hydrogens, looking good, but only one. And if I don't put a dash there, I think I wrote the number 20, so I didn't only one oxygen. So this is not balanced. And the way I think of a balanced equation is, how many of you have ever seen the chain balance or balances or scales with the uh, hands that go like this? When you have equal weights, they're at equal level. If they're not, they're not balanced. And I think that's how to term balanced equation, because you should have the same number of atoms and type, so it's balanced. So, problem is, I've got two oxygen here, but only one here. You cannot, and students like to do this, and it's always going to be wrong, you cannot change the chemical formula of water or any chemical, but you can change how many you have. And as I mentioned before, I always spell coefficient wrong, and I'll probably do it again now. And let me go to my favorite spell check engine. I was wrong. I had it right the first time. And I told you, it's certain. I've always been the first one down in spelling to anything that the science I would win. All right, the number in front is called the coefficient. And when you see no number, it's 1. Right now, each of these molecules has a coefficient of 1. You can change the coefficients to balance things. So, if I have 2 oxygen over there, how do I get 2 oxygen over here? I put the number 2 there. 2 times 1, I have 2 oxygen. But now the number of hydrogens change. How many do I have? Two times two, four. Well, I've got two oxygen here, two oxygen there. It's sort of like balancing your checkbook. But I have two hydrogen, I need four. How do I get four hydrogen? Well, if I have two and I put the number two in front, I have two times two, four hydrogen. And to check, did you really balance it? You look on each side, just like when you're balancing a checkbook. I have four hydrogen, four hydrogen, two oxygen, two oxygen, I'm done. And it's balanced. So in real life, thank you, you this reaction, you take two molecules of hydrogen have to react with one molecule of oxygen to make two molecules of water. Later on in the semester, coming up soon, we'll learn the coefficients have a very special meaning, another one that's very important. 
that allows chemists to make things like the dye in my shirt, the laundry detergent I use to clean it, the fabric softener, if you like this plastic bottle, you have one, how to make that. It all is important and comes from knowing the balanced chemical equation and using it. Let's look at another balance uh, equation. And here, if you take sodium metal and chlorine gas, react it together, and it's quite ex very hot, it gives off a lot of heat, we call that exothermic, you'll form sodium chloride. Remember, please pass the natural sodium chloride table salt. Now the first question is, is this balance? And the answer is no. Because I have two chlorine here, I only have one there, so it can't be balanced. So the question is, how do you balance it? Well, it's simple. You look here and say, how many chlorine? Two. How many here? One. I need two to get it to balance. I can't put a two there because there's no such thing as NaCl2. Trust me, there isn't. But I can change the coefficient, the number in front. And if I do this, I now have two chlorine. But now on this side, I have two sodium. And how do I get, this is only one sodium. How do I get two? Change the coefficient. And now I have two sodium. And now I'll do my check. Two sodium, two sodium. Two chlorine, two chlorine. I'm balanced and I'm happy. And what this really means is you take two sodium atoms react to one chlorine molecule, and you make two molecules of sodium chloride. And that's how you balance it. one for you to try. It's not balanced. Oh, can I have everybody's attention? When I was a freshman taking freshman chemistry, the instructor I had had balanced equations. And on a test, he put down one or two of them. We had a lot more than I'll put in the test, but that were already balanced. And the answer was, it's balanced. Well, I didn't think that was fair. If you ask me to balance an equation, well, I should have to balance it. So on any test I give you, if I ask you to balance a chemical equation, you're going to have to balance it. Writing down it's already balanced will never, ever be a correct answer. Have fun. How do you, go ahead and try and balance it. As always, anyone who came in late, don't forget to sign in before you leave today. All right, looks like everybody's done. Let's do it. All right, if we look at that, is it balanced? Well, immediately I can say two hydrogen, three hydrogen, two nitrogen, one nitrogen. 
I'm going to do the easy one first, and that's nitrogen. I have two nitrogen here. How do I get two nitrogen there? Because I only have one. I changed the coefficient to two. So now I have two nitrogen. Well, what's left? Hydrogen. Here I have six hydrogen. I only have two there. How do I get it to six? Good question. Thank you. And the answer is, what does two divided into six give you? Three. And therefore, if I do this, now three times two, I have six hydrogen. And if I look at this, it's time to check, am I done? I have six hydrogen, six hydrogen, two nitrogen, two nitrogen, I'm done. And therefore, I know if I take three hydrogen at molecules, one nitrogen molecule, and I make two ammonia molecules. This is called What you buy in the supermarket is not ammonia, it's ammonia dissolved in water. But ammonia itself at room temperature is a gas, colorless. I've worked with it. And one of the things I'll go over again later, it turns out two Germans, Haber and Bosch, found a way to make this reaction go well, because you got to do something else I'll teach you about later on. And you can make synthetic ammonia. Now, synthetic and synthesis, I'm a synthetic organic chemist, is a fancy word meaning to make. And you can make, not wait for Mother Nature. And because they discovered that, and I think it was about 1908, less than 100, a little over 100 years ago, not that long ago, having ammonia changed our planet. Why are we having that little molecule? Well, it turns out having ammonia being made in a chemical plant made it available very cheap. It's an important chemical used for fertilizer that allowed farmers, especially American farmers, to grow a lot more food. More food, more people could be existing on the planet. The other thing, which is not as good as more food, is by having more ammonia, chemists could make more explosives, like gunpowder and other explosives for the military. And because of that, wars became cheaper, and we had longer and more wars, like World War I, World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam War, and so on. And yeah, there's always good and bad things. Let's do another one. called combustion. When you burn something, this is pentane, it's a chemical, and you burn it, reacting with oxygen, you get carbon dioxide and water. And you can quickly see it's not balanced. <coughs> here I have five carbons, here I have one carbon. Now, everybody pay attention. This is a pro tip from me, a pro that I learned long ago, when you're balancing equations, leave oxygen and hydrogen last. I'll say that again. When you're balancing equations, leave oxygen and hydrogen last. You can do them first, but it makes your life harder. I don't know about you, but I like my life as easy as possible. It makes it more enjoyable. So, if I look at here, well, I better do carbon first. So I'm going to do carbon, and I'm going to say, hmm, five carbon. I need five carbon there. And it's only in this molecule. So I can put a five in front of there. That was 
wasn't that hard. And now if you look at that, I only have carbon, a hydrogen, and oxygen. So being the simple person I am, I'm going this way, I'll do hydrogen. You could do oxygen, doesn't matter. And notice I have 12 hydrogen. I only have two here. Remember, you can't change this formula. You can change the coefficient, the number in front. So if I have 12 there, 2 goes into 12, how many times? 6. So if I put a 6 here, 6 times 2, guess what? That's 12 hydrogen. Well, this is looking good. Now I'm left with only one thing, oxygen. I said leave oxygen and hydrogen last, and I always follow my own advice. It helps me. And I have two oxygen here. By the way, when you're doing these, use pencil, because you're probably going to erase it. Now, here's an important thing. When you're balancing a chemical equation, you count all the atoms on one side. So how many oxygens are on this side? One. Carbon dioxide, five times two. 10 oxygen. Water, 6 times 1, 6 oxygen. Add that up, and if I make a mistake, please correct me. But I don't think I will. 16 oxygen. Does that balance? No. Now, if I have 16 oxygen here, how do I get 16 here? Well, 2 goes into 16. How many times? Get your calculator up. No. 8. So if I do this, 2 times 8, I have 16 oxygen. And now I'll do my final check, because I think I'm done. 5 carbon, 5 carbon. Looking good. 12 hydrogen. 12 hydrogen. Looking very good. 16 oxygen. Remember, count all the oxygens on this side. 16 oxygen. So I'm going to put my razor down. Success. I'm done. And that's how you balance the equation. I better share. I've been having all the fun. First of all, everybody have this call right on this board. That's discriminating against two people. Everybody see this okay? No. No, this is a high-tech whiteboard and I can change the font instantly. Why don't you try balancing this one?
sorry about the delay, but I... That's something I think I wrote it down wrong, and if I write it down wrong, that'll make your life and mine quite... Yep. All right. Let's see what I made from this thing. I'm going to try and balance this one. Remember, leave hydrogen and oxygen last. And a test, I might have three points each balance the following equation. Remember, leave hydrogen, oxygen last. Are you doing that? I'm going to take a walk around the block. No. I said, it's a little challenging to start learning. I've been doing this a few more weeks than you have. All right, give me 20 more seconds and I'll do it. I'll give you 22 seconds.
once you finish early, try this. One finger goes forward, the other goes backwards. Don't do this while you're driving. When you master that, do it with your thumbs. All right, let's do it. Everybody, is this balanced? No. How can you tell? One iron, two iron. Remember Dr. White's advice, which I always follow my own advice, leave hydrogen, oxygen last. So that's not hydrogen, oxygen. This is one iron. This is two iron. How do I get that to two? Simple. Change the coefficient. All right, that wasn't that hard. Next, oxygen. Now I'm going to leave that for last. Hydrogen. I'll leave that for last. Hydrogen, I'll leave that for last. Sulfur, I'll do. I have one sulfur here. How many do I have? One times three. Three sulfur. Remember, count all the molecules, atoms. We practice how to do that for test one, this question like that. So how do I get this to three sulfur? I can't change that, but I can change the coefficient. mistake once in a while. And now I have three and three. So, uh-oh, I only have oxygen and hydrogen left, so I'm going to pick hydrogen first. I could have done oxygen, doesn't matter. How many hydrogens on this side? Three, but it's times two, six hydrogen. How many on this molecule? Three times two, six hydrogen. That equals 12 hydrogen. Everybody know how I got the 6 here? In the bracket, there's 1 times 3, but I have 2 of them, so it's 2 times 3 times 1, 6. And over here, 2 times 3 is 6. Now, this molecule doesn't have any hydrogen. Ooh, this one does. It only has 2. How do I get that to 12? 2 goes into the 12, 6 times, and I'll put a 6 there. So now I have 2 times 6, 12 hydrogen. Looking good. Let's see, I've done my iron, done my sulfur, I'm now into hydrogen I did, what's left? Oxygen. And you could have done either one first, doesn't matter. How many oxygen on this side? 1 times 3 times 2, which is 6 oxygen. How many on this side? Four in the molecule, but I have three of them. Three times four is twelve oxygen. And that adds up to eighteen oxygen. Let's find out how many we have on the other side. The first molecule, how many oxygens are in here? Four times three, twelve oxygen. How many in this molecule? Water. Six times one. Six oxygen. Add it together, and I get 18 oxygen. I think I'm done. How do I know I'm done? I'll check. And the nice thing, you don't have to do this on a test, but I like writing this underneath because it gives me a way of checking that I do it right. Two iron. Two iron. Two sulfur. Two sulfur. Now, ooh, 12 hydrogen, 12 hydrogen, home stretch, 18 oxygen, 18 oxygen, victory, success. And that's how you balance it. Now, there's another way of that, another aspect of balancing chemical equations that I would like to give you, show you.
And let's look at the following chemical equation. It's not balanced. And this is what I call even-odd situation. If we look at this, I have one aluminum, one aluminum. Looking good. I have two chlorine. Uh-oh. I have three chlorine. There's no way I can put a whole number. By the way, the coefficients are always whole numbers. You can't use fractions or decimals. There's no way I can multiply a whole number times three and get two. I can't. Show me a way it will be rich beyond my wildest dreams. You can't. And there's no way I can multiply a whole number times two to get three. So what do I do? I'm stuck. No, this isn't even odd. And here's the trick or skill how to master this. What number is both two and three divide into, it gives you a whole number. Well, being lazy, I know if I multiply 2 times 3, 6, both will go in there. So the question is, how do I get 6? Everybody see how I got the number 6? Saying what number will 2 and 3 both go into? Well, the easiest way to figure that out is multiply those two numbers and get 6. So if I have 6 chlorine on this side, what number do I need in front here? The number 2. So now I have 6 chlorine. I want 6 chlorine here. What number do I have to multiply 2 times to get 6? 3. So now I have 6 chlorine. Looking good. Now on this side, I have 2 aluminum. On this side, oh, I don't. How do I get that to change the coefficient? And now I'll do my check. Two aluminum, two aluminum, six chlorine, six chlorine. And that's how you do even up. And it's a skill that's good to know. And that's how you do that. Okay, somebody's going to invite a, invent a whiteboard that can just go like this and it cleans itself. Well, guess what? Not today. When you get home or have a chance, you can put on your Facebook page or tweet to your friends or text them. I know how to balance chemical equations now. Nah, I don't think you can do that. Notice 
we're doing our practice time. All right, I think everybody's done. Everybody done? Anybody need more time? Going once, twice, let's do this. All right. Well, I say leave hydrogen and oxygen last. There's no hydrogen and oxygen, so I'm going to jump right in. One sodium. One sodium. Looking good. One chlorine. Uh oh. Two chlorine. How do I get that two chlorine? Only one way change the coefficient. So now. I have to change this. This is the reason why you use pencil and right pen. And now I have two sodium, two chlorine. Uh oh, I've got to change this. How do I get two sodium? Put a two there, two there. Everybody see what I did? And now well, I got two sodium, two sodium, two chlorine, two chlorine. What's left? Iodine. How many iodine do I have here? Two. Ooh, How many on this side? Two. Am I done? Let's find out. Two sodium. Two chlorine. And two iodine. Two iodine. Success. And that's how you balance it. What that means is you take two molecules of sodium chloride, react it with one molecule iodine, you'll get two molecules of sodium iodine plus one molecule of chlorine. Molecule. And that's how you balance things, and that's how you do it. All right, listen up. Those of you who have lab tomorrow, don't forget, I'm going to be going through chapter four problem set. Also, bring your lab that's due. You do not need safety goggles. You do need proper clothing. And I will have a handout, so you don't have to do a to do list. With that, I know that's the auto. Five seconds early. I'll see you on Thursday.